All right, what you're seeing here is the atomic nuclear bomb blast test that they did to see what would damage what and how the event unfolded. Now, this is from AdamCentral.com. Very short, showing all these different sequences of atomic bomb blasts. Now, they have a hardened enclosure looking away from the bomb so it won't affect the visual. And, of course, it's hardened, so it won't go anywhere, just like these tanks won't go anywhere. Now, they moved the truck out of here because, oh, what happened to the truck? This is just a toy model. No, it is not. This is atomic bomb blast footage from, I don't know what date it was, but it's Teapot Apple II Q House atomic bombs. They have telephone poles and wires and transformers and all the things that you have, gas tanks and a house, shutters and all that, you know, shingles, and they wanted to see what everything was affected by. So they got ready and they blew off an atomic bomb. Now, I don't know how far away it was, but let's say it was a mile away. I don't know what the radius was, to be perfectly honest with you. Let's go a mile. But I don't know that for a fact. But you're going to see two completely, totally separate events. And if you were actually, I have a, one video up there that shows a third event, which is the Whistler wave. I'm not going to bother showing you that, but right now you have the intense radiation that just burns everything up. Nothing moves. And then, pew, away it goes. Now watch what happens here. Of course, they're going to move the truck out of here, so don't start with me about that kind of stuff. What happened to the truck? It's just a model. No, it is not. This conspiracy stuff drives me crazy. Now, here it goes. I got to run real slow. All right, now you, what you're going to see, and I'm going to stop it as we go, you're going to see a, a totally brilliant white light. Everything will glow. Boom, there it is. I stopped it. This is at the instant of the atomic bomb, which is way back here, somewhere way off to the side, a mile away. All right, so the light. The white part is the first thing to hit. And it's, watch what happens. It'll just smoke up. Nothing moves because the light has no, the white part has no mass. Mass is, is something that is, is like a chunk of something. Something that is nothing has no mass. And light appears to, the white part of light appears to have virtually no mass. This is as much concentrated of light as you're going to get. And it didn't move anything hardly. It's just smoking things. So what is it really doing? Think of what's happening. All we got is the white. The white is, is being pushed into other particles that have their own white. They say, no, 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 you get the hell out of here. And they say, no, 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 they're pushing me. I can't go anywhere. And everybody pushes back and it glows. Because when you push and shove field to field, inevitably, you will get light and you will get heat. That's what you got. So let's continue this forward. All we got is smoking up. I'm just going to let it go from here. Watch. Just smokes. The shingles all burn up. The facade all burns up. The poles, the wires all burn up. Boom! Here comes the black. Two completely, totally separate events. One contains mass. The other one which preceded it was just energy. Okay, I'm going to show you, or you're going to hear Whistler waves, and you're going to see them in our experiments and hear them during a nuclear bomb blast. Now, this is the characteristic of an atomic bomb Whistler wave. Most physicists have never even heard of this. What it is, it's the electromagnetic pulse. All right? When it detonates, you get this pulse. And it's field pulses first, which are in the low audible range. Well, they're in the audible range to some degree. And you hear, and then nothing until the, the rest of it happens. And I can actually show you this happening. So what you're going to have is a frequency range typically falls in the low frequency range, kilohertz to megahertz. 
Propagation waves propagate along Earth's magnetic field. Da, da, da. Detection Whistler waves caused by a nuclear explosion can sometimes be detected by special sensors. You can hear them. Why are atomic bomb Whistler waves significant? The detection of Whistler waves generated by atomic bomb explosions provide useful information about the detonation, including the altitude of the explosion, the pulse generated, the effects on the ionosphere. And then they go going into, you know, bombs and all this stuff. Well, I'm going to show you this actual Whistler wave happening, and you will hear it, too. Here it comes. Not only are you going to hear and see about Whistler waves, you're going to hear what happened in the last week or so, where they say light goes both directions at the same time, one going this way and one going that way, which it does. When it interacts with the Venturi, this is squirting out this way, and it has no weight whatsoever, no mass. It's coming through this way, and there's the darkness, has the mass, that's pushing the white. But here, it's just bouncing. So yes, it goes both directions, confirmed, and one direction carries mass, and the other ma is massless. Another thing that I just said, also confirmed. Whistler waves, confirmed. High energy waves, confirmed. Separation of dark and white matter, confirmed. Matter that will burn a house down, confirmed. Matter that will knock a house down, confirmed. Subatomic, because we're using light, confirmed. Now let's, let's actually show you these things happen in an atomic bomb blast. Okay, I'm going to explain to you what you're going to be seeing, but the first thing is there'll be nothing happening. And then all of a sudden, you'll see a tiny little blast, and you'll hear, and that's this, which is the Whistler waves. They are in this frequency down here, which is in audible range. Now, they had some kind of receivers, and it was picking up this sound, which is the EMP, the electromagnetic pulse. These are electromagnetic fields, and they have no no mass to them whatsoever. And this has no mass to it whatsoever that I can find. It just burns up the house, as I think you saw. And this is the mass that knocks the house over. This is the concussion. This is the reverse. And this is the forward. Forward has the mass. Reverse has no mass. All of those things explained. Now let's watch it actually happen. Now this was something I did a year or so ago, but I've done this for years. But this shows all of the three sequences in an event. And I'm not going to speak over myself. I'm just going to play what I showed then, and it will be quite obvious. Now, the first thing, like I said, you're going to see a little flash. And then you're going to hear, and I'll say, did you hear that? Did you hear that? I remember saying that. <laughs> Here it goes. Did you hear that? No, get ready. Listen to this. Did you hear that? You didn't see any nuclear blast yet. You can see it. But now it's coming at us. You see this? This is the dark particles coming at us. That wave coming across the desert. So we have not heard anything other than that. Now we're going to hear the blast. the blast. <laughs> so it took all that time for that dark matter to hit that distance. I don't know what that distance is, but the, your first you heard, and that was the Whistler wave. And the white preceded this, and you know, you they got, ra they got radiated by the white particles, yes. Um, they didn't see them because they're in the middle of the daylight. So you don't really see a whole lot of particles after the initial flash, but they came uh, directly ahead of that black wave. Just as like I showed you in our experiment, those white particles would have been being pushed right in front of the black particles that smacked and BAM! But this would have been in front of it. Here is a and then this is, it would diminish over the course of time very quickly, I would say. But the, the dark particles Bam, those are the ones that hit. It's quite obvious what's happened. Three separate events. 
So don't get rid Dipole electron flood theory solves everything. It shows the particles, it shows them separate them, it shows the white and the black. We may be able to get free energy. This, anytime you have excessive illumination, it means you have an increase in energy. That's why they say electron showers are extremely much higher than particles that are not in the white electron showering mode. Electron showers go huge energy increase. I mean, they say it's huge, and I can I have to agree. That is a subatomic nuclear explosion. It's exactly what it is. It's a subatomic bomb. We set off a subatomic bomb right from here. Pew! Only we could direct it. All right, and it's a black. So it's just not a big ball of death. Death. This is like a death ray. I mean, I hate to be talking this way and showing these things if somebody could use them to be terrible. And, you know, that's just the way people are now. It's just incredible. But, you know, we need this we have free energy, too. There's always an upside and a downside, everything. Everything. But we, we need to start realizing that there are rules and laws, not of this world, of the world that you want to go to in your afterlife. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't follow the rules and the laws, you ain't going to get there. As far as I can determine, I have looked up and down every single way and every single, well, I, as much text as I can, can get through. And it keeps kind of changing, changing, changing daily, but it, it boils down to one thing. And the only thing I can put in common is there is a God, there's giants, there was dragons, there's immortals, so they're here somewhere. There's an eternity. We're going to get one side or the other, the light side or the dark side. It's, everything is about the light. A hundred percent, Jesus said, we are children of the light. We are the light. We are atomic vapor, chosen, selected to be the elect of God. That comes with obligations. And I see those obligations as not fulfilled by any means recently. I mean, it's just, it's just terrible. What did God say? Peace on earth, good will to men. Women, I would assume, are included. You see that? I don't see that. I see some. I don't want to dis dismiss everybody's efforts to be good and nice. There are some, and they will be rewarded for their efforts. Trust me. This is not going to. This is not going to end well for a lot of them. And, and, and a lot of them know this. They know that they're doing the wrong thing, and this doesn't matter as long as it benefits them. Those are the people that God doesn't want. Those are called false teachers. They will teach you anything as long as it keeps them in power. They will say, dismiss God. Don't talk about God. Don't talk about Jesus Christ. That's outside of the realm of science. Well, let me tell you something. The realm of science is a realm of fantasy. They, they have caused your mind to be so indoctrinated with peer review and so forth, and the threat, a threat, it's an absolute threat, that if you go against them, your life is in danger, basically. Not physically, they won't come and break your legs, I don't think they do that now. They might, <laughs> I have no idea. But it's a physical, it's a, it's, a, it's a threat of your lifestyle. You go there to learn, to increase your income, and you might, because you have learned to be indoctrinated to say exactly what everybody else said. And if you can say it in a more meaningful way, in a more excited way, in a more, you know, engaged way, then you become the hero and everybody's, ooh, ooh look at, he's smart. Well, you're just saying what everybody else says, but just a little more elegantly. I go to the outside. I say, wait a minute, let's talk about this. Let's talk about light acceleration. Let's talk about what you're seeing here. Oh, that's just paradigolia. I say, no, it's not. It's pH. Deolia. That means if you're a PhD, nothing matters. Nothing, it's, it's, it's nothing because it's not peer reviewed and they won't peer review what they don't want to peer review. That, that's meant to side and it's, it's uh, really it's a fiduciary failure to the students in the most terrible, egregious way. So I'm going to, I'm probably going to leave it at this right now. Well, maybe I won't. <laughs> Hold on a second. Just stay me one more second.